Interference can be seen in nature. For example, you must have seen oil spills on roads. They give colorful patterns or colors in soap bubbles. Or sometimes you can even see them in insects. A beautiful example is the blue morpho butterfly. It turns out they don't really have that blue pigments. Then what gives them this striking color? Interference of thin films. So we will deal with now interference in thin films. When you have a very thin film, it could be a film of oil, could be a film of air, or maybe water, doesn't matter. As long as you have some reflecting or refracting medium which has an extremely thin film, you can form a thin film out of it, then you're going to get interference pattern. So what's going to happen is the following. Suppose you have a film which has a thickness, let's say T, and I incident a light, and here's that light, which I incident, I incident it almost, almost perpendicular, to avoid all the angles. So some part of the light refracts and goes inwards, and of that some part goes out again, but some part of this light reflects out, and it goes out this way. Here also there's some part of it that's going out this way. And now it's these two rays of light can interfere with each other. Because, look, this light beam has taken a shorter path. This one over here has taken a longer path. So this is light beam one, this is light beam two, and they can interfere with each other and give you construction or destruction. But this did not stop over here. This light beam could also reflect one more time before coming out. And now I have beams three and beams four. They can interfere and give you a pattern. So what we're gonna talk about is finding out what are the conditions for constructions, maximas and minimas for this system. We call this as the reflected system. For obvious reasons, this is the reflected system. And this is the refracted system. So that depends upon where you're seeing. If your eye is over here, when light comes from there, then you're going to see the refracted system. And if your eye is over here, and the light is coming from there, then you're going to end up seeing the reflected system. And each one has different cases. It has to be dealt with differently. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about reflected system. That's a little bit harder than the refracted one. So let's do that first. All I need to know is the path difference between the first and two waves because once I know the path difference, I have all the tools to calculate, then I have construction, and then I have destruction. Now, what you can see is that the second wave has traveled an additional path of two times t. So, the additional path traveled, additional path by b2, you can see it's about two times t. Now I know it's about a little bit more than that because it's slanted, but I'm saying at almost perpendicular incidence, so forget about angles. So it's all it's about two times t. But we are forgetting something. What we are forgetting is that this particular film might have some refractive index, let's say m. And when the beam of light enters from air, let's say, it enters into a medium which has a refractive index m, then its wavelength is going to get shorter. And in fact, it's going to get shorter by a factor m. So it's, it's like saying that when you go, when you're walking, if you, if you go from, let's say, some, from ground to sand, it's like saying that your uh, footsteps gotten shorter. And if your footstep has now gotten maybe like, let's say, five times shorter, you start walking like baby, then in order to cover that same distance, you have to now travel five times more because your footsteps have become five times shorter. So sort of an analogy. So because your wavelength becomes n times shorter, to travel this much distance, it has to actually travel n times more over here. So I should factor in that n. If this n is one, then I don't have any factoring in because wavelength has not shrunk. If at n equals two, then what happens is that wavelength becomes two times smaller so I'll have to have twice the number of waves over here, which means it has traveled twice the amount of path compared to earlier, and so on. So that's the additional path traveled by the second one. What about the first one? Well, the first one also does something a little crazy. 
because the light is bouncing off a denser medium see this is a denser medium and this is the rarer one so this light beam is bouncing off a denser medium when that happens this light beam undergoes an additional path it, uh, it undergoes a phase shift of pi by 2 um, to give you an example as to what happens sorry not pi by 2 it undergoes a phase shift of pi to give you an example of what would happen imagine you have a pulse going along a string which is attached to a fixed end so the pulse travels this way it travels like this it travels like this and ultimately what happens is that since this end is attached over here instead of energy transferring to this particular end and trying to go it upwards you can sort of think of Newton's third law it tries to make it down and so what happens is that the pulse goes down and comes back like this so what you see is that when it reflects off you can sort of say a denser medium like a rigid object over here then it has a part difference, it has a phase difference of pi. It's out of phase. On the other hand, if that same pulse was traveling along a string which was attached to an object and if this particular attachment was allowed to move up and down, then by the time it would come over here, this would actually go up and then come back down and because of this, a pulse like this would go back. So here there is no phase shift. So there is a 180 degrees that corresponds to pi radians phase shift and there is no phase shift over here. So this beam of light is undergoing something very similar over here, sort of undergoes a 180 degree phase shift, but 180 degree phase shift corresponds to a path difference of lambda by two. So it's equivalent to thinking that the first wave also underwent an additional path of lambda by two. So the additional path by the first wave is exactly, uh, I can say approximately, about lambda by two. And therefore, what is the total path difference? Well, the total path difference has to be the subtraction of these two. This, will, this number is usually going to be higher than this one, so I can say the total path difference is going to be 2nt minus lambda by 2. That's what you get in the refracted system. And now we can plug in um, what's going to happen for construction. Well, 2nt minus lambda by 2 has to be equal to an integral multiples of lambda. Now, since I've already used n for refractive index, I will call this as m lambda. So the condition now becomes 2nt equals um, m lambda plus lambda by 2, or 2nt becomes 2m plus 1 lambda by 2. So this is now the expression for construction in the refractive system. And for destruction, the path difference must be equal to 2m plus 1 lambda by 2 and so when it goes over there I get 2n t is equal to 2m plus 1 lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2 that gives me 2m plus that gives me m plus 1 lambda by 2 is equal to m plus 1 lambda but m plus 1 is just an integer doesn't matter it is called as now m lambda so some integer times lambda so that's what you get if you have a reflected system. Now you may be wondering what happened at these reflections, at this reflection, doesn't the second light beam also undergo a phase difference of 180 degrees, phase shift of 180 degrees at this reflection? No, it doesn't, because at this end, it is bouncing off a rarer medium, it's like this. And so this reflection does not have a 180 degree phase shift. So only this reflection has a 180 degrees phase shift. This does not have 180 degree phase shift. What about this reflection? Nope because again it's bouncing off the rarer medium. So even this reflection has zero degree phase shift. So only it's this reflection which gives you a phase shift of zero, 180 degrees which corresponds to a path difference of lambda by two.